So in our history, there was a time before the wheel was invented and after the wheel was invented, before penicillin and after penicillin, and today we are on the precipice of a similar, if not larger, event. Because for the last thousand years, people have been asking, how the fuck do you animate text in Blender? There's been no way to do this except doing some roundabout plug-in or add-on kind of thing. Today, we can finally animate text in Blender, and not only that, we have full geometry nodes procedural control, uh, meaning that we can output a whole bunch of information. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to output like the X and Y coordinates of an object. Maybe we'll also do a Z coordinate, uh, but there's a lot more you can do with this. So this is just an introduction to uh, the next stage of man. So here's how we fucking do this. So. Uh, for this project, and again, uh, you can see it's actually working. It's updating, it's showing the X and Y coordinates. Uh, for this project, make sure that you have the newest build of uh, Blender uh, downloaded. I'm using 3.0 Alpha, the newest one. I don't want to have comments like I did last time. Where's this node? Where's this node? I can't follow it. Get the newest version of Blender. Uh, it's going to be converted to nodes fields automatically, I believe, and it's going to have a bunch of new nodes, okay? Uh, with that, I think you have all the prerequisites ready uh, for me to blow your mind. Here's how we do it. So what I'm going to do is uh, in this new Blender project, again, 3.0 alpha, go to geometry nodes because um, all this text animation stuff still can't be done, for, done from the text menu, but we can do it in geometry nodes. So create a node tree. Uh, we don't need this. And our first order of business is how do we create some text? Well. Uh, what we have already and what we've had is if you go shift A, you go to input, we have a, a string input, which basically means text, right? So I could type in something into here and that's stored as a string variable. It's just information. I could write something else in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, however, if I take this and connect it to the geometry, not only does it not work, it has this red line being like, you idiot. It's not how it works. Um, the issue is you can't just display the string information the same way that I couldn't plug the number two in here and expect something to happen. What we need to do is use a special node, and this is the big deal. It's called string to curve. String to curves, I guess there's multiple. And what this node does is it takes a string input and turns it into a curve or a geometry output. And you can see um, now this has turned into text. Okay, fine. But this means that we can change the input at any moment. And we'll talk about how to animate and all this, but anything you could type into here. Not only that, after you, you know, put in this text data or the string data, uh, then this is processed into curves, meaning we can change the size or the spacing or anything and change the input and it's going to inherit that spacing or whatever. Also a change of font, which I hope one day is, is going to be its own uh, socket that I can change like a font type. But, but you see the power here. Okay, fine. Uh, this still doesn't get to the point. How do we like animate and, you know, use data? Well, uh, if you go to the text nodes, you're going to see we don't have too many and I'm expecting there to be a couple more, uh, but we do have some stuff. So we have special characters. This isn't too important. It's just like certain things that aren't easy to type like tab and stuff like this. Uh, but we have string join, so we can join multiple pieces of text. We'll be using that one. Uh, we can control substring, so we can kind of like trim it and stuff like that. So for example, string substring. Uh, let's us say how many letters should show up in this thing. And this is something that we can animate already. Um, uh, but what I'm really interested in is this value to string node. So in the same way that we can convert a string to a curve, I'm going to convert a number a value to a string and then convert that to a curve. What do I mean? Well, if I use this node instead, you can see we have a value. So let's say it's one. It's going to convert that into a string, a piece of text, which is then converted into a curve which is something we can animate. And not only that, we have a bit more control. So if I want some decimal points to get more precision, that exists as well. So timers, all this, super easy now. And again, all this character spacing stuff carries over. So with that, how do we you know, use this information to kind of output the X and Y coordinates of an object or pretty much anything that you can turn into a value? How do we mess with that? Well. Uh, let's go with the X and Y coordinate example. I'm going to have this sphere. I'm going to take it. I'm going to scale it down. And this is our object of interest. A beautiful lady entered the room and we need to know her X and Y coordinates in the room. Probably not, but <laughs> you know, that's what we're going to be doing. So with this, I'm going to parent it to our new object. So this doesn't change anything about the text. It just means when I move it, it's going to be moving here too. So we're not really looking at the X and Y coordinate of the text. We just care about the sphere. And what I'm going to do is I somehow want to have this X and Y information of the sphere. Well, how do we import in the information of an object? 
object info. Wow. <laughs> uh, so take the object info node. What object do we care about? The sphere. I'm going to take the sphere object that we now have all this stuff about, and I'm going to be looking at its location. Where is it? So we take this, we separate it by x, y, z. This is, again, the power of the uh, node fields things. This is how we deal with stuff now. Although I don't know if you'd use attributes here anyways. Either way, take location, separate it into its x, y, z components. We only care about the x component, plug it in here, and you can see now I'm going to move it down the x-axis and it's updating. So is it actually at 1.49? Let's find out. It is. Or well, it's actually at something a bit more precise. 1.48 whatever. We add more decimals, uh, we get access to that information. Or maybe uh, we only want the integer. So 1, 2, 3, and it can also go negative 1, 2, 3, 0, etc. Although I'm, I'm not a big fan of that negative positive zero thing, but I, I, see, I see where that comes from. So either way, let's have a couple decimal points. And again, the movement of the text doesn't matter. We're referencing the object info, so we're looking at this object. So we have that. How do we now take this and also look at Y information, but display them at the same time? Because we could kind of have one or the other, but like, how do we have both? So for example, I'm going to take this. I'm going to now look at the Y information. So we have X, Y. If I was to swap this here, you can see now the X movement of the object doesn't matter. Uh, but the Y movement does update it, right? As we'd expect. But we kind of have one or the other. How do we show both? Well, this is where some of these text node comes into play, like string join and all this. So uh, string join, it's kind of like concat concatenation. I forget the word. Concatenate? I don't know. Programmers will know. It's this idea of how do you add, like what's the addition in text language? Well, it's just putting one after another. In other words, I can have this x coordinate here. I'm going to join it with the y coordinate. So you can imagine we have one, and then it's going to write the other. And then I'm going to output that. So it's going to look a bit confusing, but you can see the X locations updating this. And so is the Y location. Uh, the only thing that makes it weird is it doesn't have the standard notation of parentheses and a comma in between. Uh, but luckily, this string join has a very uh, special input, and it's not there for nothing. It's the delimiter. What's a delimiter? It's basically what is going to be the character that is put in between. Now, I don't know if we can literally put a space. Let's see. Oh, we could actually put a space. So I've put in kind of like an empty character. And now you can see that there is a space in between these. So we have X separated from Y. Now, um, ideally, what we actually put in here is just the comma. So I'm going to add the comma delimiter. And now you can see there will always be a comma in between these. And no matter how many characters each one of these. So now it's taking one, two, three, four, five. So the negative sign, a number, a period. It's taking five characters, and now it's taking a little less because there's not a minus sign. It automatically puts everything in the correct placement. They don't overlap each other. Okay, so we have x coordinate, y coordinate. How do we turn this into a thing with parentheses? Well, somehow we need to go back in time and add a beginning parenthesis and an end parenthesis. Uh, no, I mean, we just have the string join. So all we have to do is add another string join. So I've already taken X and Y and put a comma in between. I'm going to take this and I'm going to add in a custom string. Again, we just have the string input that we could just type whatever. I'm going to put a beginning comma. And by the way, if you add it in here, it's going to be on the wrong side. The way this uh, seems to work is the order that you connect this in is what matters. So I'm going to first put the con or the uh, parenthesis and then put this. So it's order, not like which is on top of another. So now we have this parenthesis. I'm going to string join again. Again, we don't need a delimiter for this. Like if I put a, I don't know, the number four, then we could have a, a four in between here or an exclamation point. We don't need a delimiter here. For this one, I'm going to be using another string, this time a close parenthesis, and we put it in second. And now we have a coordinate system, X coordinate, Y coordinate. And if we wanted to get crazy, it wouldn't be much harder to add in a Z coordinate. In fact, all we'd have to do is kind of just repeat what we did, right? So we take this. I'm going to use the one with the delimiter since we want comma Z coordinate. And let's extract the Z coordinate, which is not what I did in the demo, but whatever. Now we also have a Z coordinate just as easily. And you can see Z is now changing this. And it's all working. Again, everything we've done here is just text manipulation that we can then convert into a curve using a cu a custom parameters like the size, the spacing. If you wanted to do like... Um, show it on different lines instead of x, y, z all one after another. Line spacing would be important. In this case, it's not. Um, and we can change the font, whatever. 
Um, but if we were to take this now and it's a working system and we were to go to render mode, you're gonna notice that, especially if I disable this, you're not actually gonna see the text because it's just a curve without any depth or fill or whatever. So let's add some of that. Uh, we have this string converted into a curve. To add fill, what do, you, what, what do you think you type in? That's right, you type in curve fill. It's pretty much what you'd expect every time. So curve is now gonna be filled. There's options for this. Um, and now if we were to you know, render this, you know, it actually has some dimension to it. It's still flat, but it, it doesn't have depth, but it's filled in at least. So X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate. All of this can be updated. And since we're already doing this whole procedural thing, uh, why don't we have all of it be procedural? So for example, the movement of this, I'm just gonna keyframe it randomly. So I'm just gonna add a keyframe. And in the graph editor, I'm going to add in the keyframe. So I have this uh, X, Y, Z information here. If I didn't add in a keyframe, you see it's not there. Um, so with that, end menu on the graph editor, is going to let us add in custom you know, info. So for the modifiers, I'm gonna add in a noise modifier. And now you can see it's wiggling up and down and that's gonna update geometry nodes, etc. So I'm just gonna make it a slow, big motion, something like that. Copy that to the clipboard, paste it here, offset it so it's giving slightly different things, offset it here so it's giving slightly different things. And you can see uh, what this is going to do is now we have this uh, randomly moving sphere that's moving a bit too quickly. But either way, uh, these numbers are updating relative to this com completely procedural system. Procedural movement followed by procedural X, Y, and Z coordinates. Now, by the way, um, if you were wondering how do I take this and actually give it depth, since, you know, you know we did the curve fill, and I'm just going to get rid of some of this graph editor stuff now. Uh, because we don't need it. Just wanted to show that that was possible. Um, so if I wanted to, and let's delete the uh, key keyframes. Um, if I wanted to give this depth, uh, what you do at this point is we've taken the curve, we filled it in, it's now a mesh, and you'd want to either like solidify or extrude. And you're going to notice that we don't have that node yet. I think it is in some of the custom builds. For now, we don't have an extrude node. So what we do for now, you, this isn't how you do it in the future, uh, as you'd have the, your geometry nodes modifier that again does all this, and then we just add in a solidify modifier. Ideally, this is going to be a node at some point, so we can uh, control it procedurally within our network and do some stuff with that. Uh, but now this thing has depth and it looks super cool. And uh, again, I know I'm saying I'm beating this into the ground, but this entire system is procedural in the sense that we could just change the font and the system still works, but it just looks a bit different. Um, also, if we wanted like, I don't know, one decimal for one of these, no decimals for some, three decimals for another, uh, we can control that. So X is only gonna give us an integer, Y is gonna give us up to the tenths place, and Z is gonna give us up to the hundredths place. So I think you understand. now. Again, text nodes, I assume, are going to be updated. What I'd like and what I feel like is missing is if I had two, like, strings, uh, which by themselves you can't animate, so I can't, like, take this and add in a keyframe here. I'd like a string switch node, so I can have two of these and then switch in between them. I'm sure there's a, a kind of clever way to do it with uh, substrings and whatever. I mean, there is. You join them and then you do some substring stuff. I'd like to not do that for now. Um, if there was a switch node, that'd be convenient. But for now, I think uh, I have covered it in 13 minutes, which is plenty. Um, so let's move on. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, this is the point where I thank all the generous patrons who uh, not only get to fund this tutorial channel and the CG Matter channel, but they get a bunch of benefits in return. For example, this tutorial they saw before you. It's early access. They probably saw it a day or maybe two days, probably a day uh, before you guys. That's the early access tier. Uh, there's also blend files. So this blend file, I'm going to kind of clean it up. I'm going to make this demo file available so you can play around with it, add some nodes. You don't have to do it all yourself. Um, also, any other blend file I've ever made, you can download. So blend files, early access, also exclusive tutorials. I'm currently working on a four-part tutorial series only for patrons about that severed hand thing that I showed a while ago on the CG Matter channel. So far, three parts have been uploaded, and I need to get to the fourth. I've been a bit busy, but I'm going to finish it, and then that's going to be exclusive there with the blend files, of course. But um, yeah, 
So thank you, patrons. Um, I appreciate your uh, generosity and helping this channel uh, exist because otherwise it would not. And uh, yeah, text, never going to be the same again. No more how do you animate text. It's a thing we can do now. So yeah. <laughs>